Um, and so welcome, Joel. Thanks so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Yeah. Could you share with everybody just like, you know, like a quick little bio about like who you are, what you do, and then we'll get into your three uniques. Definitely. So born and raised in Vancouver. I am currently a business development manager at a private equity firm called the Skidmore Group, where I help with uh, commercial partnerships as well as their marketing. And then I also am a LinkedIn youth editor, uh, TEDx speaker, and uh, marketing advisor for people to understand social media storytelling. So uh, honored to be here today, and I think this is such an important topic to dig into as uh, so much of the working world is now digitalized and um yeah looking forward to sharing some tips i'm excited too and so joel and i just recently connected on linkedin over the last couple of weeks he came across one of the posts that i was in it was actually another podcast with a colleague that we both know and he liked the post and he commented on it and so i reached out to him because i'm always interested in connecting with new people and so he's uh gladly come on and so joel i'd love to ask you what your three uniques are yeah so my three, I, I chose one letter to kind of keep it um, all on the same line. It would be personable, process focused, and paint it forward. Um, I think those three have been, yeah, I think those three have been quite key to my journey. And so I'd be happy to share kind of what each of those words mean. Um, any, any questions you have related to them? Uh, yeah, why don't you dig in with the first one? Let's hear about it. For sure. So I think personable has been a huge one in my life because I think in the world of university or job experience a lot of us have a similar career path mm -hmm. but not all of us have the same personality tone humor uh, storytelling techniques and I think that's where LinkedIn really enables you to um, step aside and, and actually use that as an advantage in your storytelling and so whether that's your background, um, a unique story in your upbringing, or a particular way that you view your industry. I think using online storytelling, videos, photos, and LinkedIn, you can actually position yourself and your personable traits that you would have compared to others. And I think um, that's such a great way to kick things off as you kind of look for new opportunities up ahead. Yeah, I think that's amazing. And that's where I feel like we have to sort of move away from the traditional confines of the resume or the job application site. Again, like those are two valuable tools, like go to the employer sites, go to the job postings and apply and, and work through all the questions and make sure you have a great resume. And if you need a resume coach, find somebody. All those things are great. But I also sort of feel like the resume is, is kind of dying off, right? Like it's such a flat document now. And we have this, uh, we have all these great platforms that we use and we've got Zoom and everyone's like, like where was Zoom like a year ago? Like, like it's now, yeah. just become, it's become its own separate language, like Google this or Zoom that. So, mm -hmm. think, you know, it's such a great uh, opportunity to really share those things that you said and really like, bring out those hidden talents that don't sometimes get transpired in mm -hmm. adjectives or nouns that you would put in your resume. Mm -hmm, for sure. And I think uh, another thing to finish that point would be taking that extra step so that your personal focus reflects your character as well as something that you want to be remembered for. Um, whether that's, you know, after this podcast, sending you a note to say, hey, I noticed you brought up X, Y, Z. This resonates with my story and I just wanted to kind of notice that in you. I think being personable nowadays goes so much further than what you could have done 10 years ago with social media and technology. Right. And I just encourage people to see how they can maximize it to really uh, reflect positively on their own uh, characteristics. So, yeah. Amazing. And your second one? Second one would be process focused. Mm -hmm. um, I think, especially for younger people, there's bombard bombarding endless lists of celebrities, influencers, and people that have an audience of their own to control. And I think it can be quite daunting to make that first step if you're, you know, posting for the first time, or if you're starting a podcast for the first time, or reaching out to someone new. And I think choosing to be process focused rather than outcome or product focused mm -hmm. really enables you to be comfortable with the rhythm of what you're learning. Right. And uh, it actually makes it easier to accomplish a task when you're focused on what you're doing rather than maybe an output that you're trying to achieve. Um, an example would be you don't need to have 
you know, 10,000 followers before you share your first video or photo or, or text on LinkedIn. It's about showing up, being genuine and enjoying the process of what you're learning along the way. And if you're able to um, be comfortable with that learning process and you're actually being empowered as an individual, it takes a lot less pressure off having a magical outcome um, when you see it that way. Uh, I love that. I love the whole part about the learning too, because obviously it's like, yeah, like you'll start learning. It's like, okay, uh, where my sort of natural energy or my natural strengths come through when I'm conveying something in a piece of content, it's going to mm-hmm. resonate with people differently. Um, maybe different users or different readers will be like, okay, so maybe I'm appealing more to like women, this age group or men, this age group or people on in Europe from this time zone versus, you know, in North America on this time zone. Uh, mm-hmm. So you'll start seeing those stats come through and you'll see the learnings and you can adjust your content. I love that. The other thing that I love about it too is that when you're approaching it from a process standpoint, that's actually a skill in itself that becomes a unique quality that companies would be looking for is that you, right. you're learning as, you, as you're developing a process. Um, mm-hmm. So it's becoming iterative, you're agile. And the keyword that or the buzzword that we're hearing so much about right now is like, do we have leaders that are resilient, right? So it's like- sure. Are you getting fussed over the results or are you learning from the process and just continue building and evolving? Yeah. And Brenda, I think it's, it's such a fascinating point because I think over these last couple of years, at least in my community, I've seen people do so many creative things with their process, whether that's starting their own business and, and documenting the series on YouTube or as they build their professional network, building out a podcast um, like what you're starting. And I think, the, the traditional way of building a career process has completely been flipped on its head. And I just encourage people to think creatively about whatever goal they're going for, how can they use a process to build a community, to, to build a story, and to ultimately um, challenge themselves in ways that they might not have thought were possible before. That's amazing. And your third one? The third one would be paying it forward. And it might be a bit overheard, but I think if you were to trace back those first two points, if you're doing those things well, I think you're then able to create a platform and multiple avenues where you can pay it forward. Um, This would come in cases like when people reach out to you and they're asking for similar advice or you have younger individuals or people going through um, COVID-19 right now and you're remembering that yourself in their shoes I just encourage you to, to take those opportunities to pay it forward. And it doesn't always need to be in exhaustive ways. I think I would encourage people to brainstorm or, or come up with creative resources that they can just give out for free, no strings attached, just to help people out. Right. Whether that's a podcast, a YouTube link, or one of your um, past articles. And, and maybe it is jumping on the phone or a Zoom call. But I think once you're in a place of authority or understanding, choosing it to create uh, an ecosystem where you can pay it forward, I think is so important. Yeah, I've definitely seen that over the last three weeks. So I've taken on this, um, I call it a responsibility to do a hundred day challenge around content. So Mm -hmm. I'm just like adding things every day. And, you know, there's probably a part of me where I was being a little bit skeptical of myself, like, oh, you know, I just, I take this for granted. This is a tool or a, a skill or an article I read. And I always kind of refer back to it, whether it's a Daniel Pink or a Marcus Buckingham or some guru that I followed like for the last 20 years. And I just, think, well, everyone's seen it, but you know, you just don't know. Right. So it's, it's a great opportunity to, um, you know, share what you know. Definitely. Oh, yeah. we, we got frozen there a little bit, but that's okay. Right. That's all part yeah. Of the- the audio came through. And I, I think um, another point I was going to say is I think we take for granted sometimes the things that come so easy to us. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the best content I think, or the best stories you can share are just the answers to the people in your network that are asking those questions. Right. Um, and I, I find that really fascinating because whether you're, you know, a, a software engineer or a leadership speaker, what we've been doing, you know, day in and day out, people would find um, completely new stepping into. And I think using social listening on on Twitter or LinkedIn can be so helpful to just keep an ear to the ground of what resources you can create to pay it forward. Mm -hmm. um, And what, what resources would also 
um, make the most impact for your community. Yeah, I love the social listening piece. Because uh, a lot of people that I've sort of recently connected with are like, you know, they've even said to me, wow, it's so great that you're posting all this content. Thank you so much. Absolutely, no problem. Mm -hmm. What else would you like to hear? So mm -hmm. it's asking questions as well too, I think of that audience, that once mm -hmm. you start making those connections, so it kind of goes back to your process unique that you talked about in the second one is, you know, don't worry so much about the end result, like how many likes, shares, et cetera, just, you know, keep posting. But when you do get those comments back, like even engage with those, uh, that new audience that you're forming, listen to what they are saying and even ask them questions about mm -hmm. what would they like to hear more of or less of and, you know, and get their opinions. And then that's learning and you can recycle that and, and use it for good. So there goes your pay it forward piece. Um, Definitely. I love those things. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah. And were you surprised by the, the three choices or did you thought they resonated well? Uh, well, number one, I think just knowing you for the short time that I've known you and also since we've connected and seeing the content that you put out there, it's totally in line with who you are. So I think that's the great thing. And, and that's the example that I would want to share with everybody that's listening is just be authentically yourself. Hmm. And like there's, what is it? I'm going to get the stat wrong, but we are close to like 8 billion people in the world. And, um, and you probably know exactly how many people are on LinkedIn, how many users are on LinkedIn. So it's just, you know, it's like we're sometimes trying, we're sometimes so worried about like, you know, what that employer is going to think of us and are they going to like all the things that we have to offer. And there's just so many people around the world. So be genuine, be yourself, um, speak, speak your truth, speak what you know, it's going to connect with people. Um, you know, don't worry about who that person is and are they the ideal person. Like you'll, you'll figure out who that ideal match is going to be with that company or that hiring manager uh, or that recruiter, whomever, or, you know, somebody that knows somebody like, you know, maybe it's For like sure. someone hears something and you have a video that you've done. And it's like, you need to meet my friend. He's a new entrepreneur. He's starting up this business. He totally needs you working for him. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And, and maybe I'm not sure much time we have left, but I think uh, you only really pick up how much impact I think your story is having if you're in it for the long run. I think a lot of people will be picking up social media or new skills or habits during this, this crazy unique time. But I think it's so important to understand that social media and especially LinkedIn is such a long run game. And it's not about one post. It's not about how many views you get in one week. It's about creating this uh, amazing, you know, dedicated professional community that I think unlock so much potential and you might not s start seeing any messages or, or kind of creative ideas that come out of it for a couple months, a year, maybe two years. And I think the exciting part is that as soon as you invest, um, the more time you give it, the more amazing ideas come out as a result. That's a really good clarifying point. And you've got some really good resources on your LinkedIn profile page yep, that I just sure. encourage everybody after watching this video to go check you out. I'll yeah. have I'll have all your contact information in the post that I do, but they should definitely go to your, your profile page because you've got in the featured section, I've noticed you've got some really great helpful posts in there. And then you're posting mm -hmm. daily too. So there's videos, there's tons of content that you're doing and you're speaking to exactly those things. So it's awesome if people want to know like how to get started. For sure. Yeah, more than happy to, to answer any questions if you want to send me a note. And uh, thanks again for having me on. Yeah, so just um, one, maybe one last question I'm going to ask yeah, you to kind of totally. think of stuff, or I'm going to like just a couple more minutes and go okay, for it. So, just fun question What's the um, your favorite concert or like the concert you'll never forget that you've gone to? Mm -hmm. Or an event, could be sporting event or concert. I think it would have to be um, LA Clippers basketball game. Uh, in 2018 yeah. and the reason it was unique was because um, we got to host an event with uh, part of the marketing team of the Clippers oh. and then we got to go watch the game and I think that was a neat just kind of intersection of um, a professional event at a, a sporting game so yeah yeah so you're not gonna forget that one that's very cool and then what's um, a snapshot of an ordinary moment in your life that brings you tons of joy hmm I think today's a great example, depending on when people listen to this, but just being outside in the sun, sunglasses, book open, and an iced coffee or local beer um, on the patio. Nice. Yeah. When yeah. patio's open again. <laughs> yeah. 
And for people, if, if you're listening to this, it's, I think, supposed to be 27 today no. in Van you, Vancouver. Man. Yeah, so that's kind of uh, a timely choice. Yeah, well, you can see the sun, like, beating through the skylight in my, in my kitchen right now. Yeah. Um, and then, last question for you. What are you deeply grateful for right now in your life? I think family and mentors always jumps to mind. Um, I think the farther we go in our career or life, we realize how much our parents as well as our mentors have uh, stirred up so many ideas and, and unique ways that we approach life. And I think in times like this where a lot of the world's flipped upside down, I'm just so grateful for those people in my life that, that have really uh, instructed and empowered me as a, as a person to approach um, life the way that I do. So, yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Well, thank you, Joel, for being on today. Thanks to everybody else for tuning in. And hopefully you take some really great examples of how you can position your three uniques uh, using LinkedIn. Awesome. Or Until other next time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm going to end the recording. Thanks.